Hi, I'm Katherine Mullins, and I wanna share with you a vision that I had about the courtroom in heaven. So a while back, I felt like the Lord took me in my mind's eye to the courtroom in heaven. And in front of me, I saw a really large throne and I saw God the Father seated on the throne and right beside that throne, Jesus was sitting at the right hand of the Father. And in the room, there was a lot of tension happening. There was kind of like all of these angels pacing back and forth with pent up energy. And I heard this really loud rumble of voices and I was looking around trying to figure out where these voices were coming from. And I realized that these voices were coming from the earth and they were the sound of the prayers of the saints coming to the throne of God. And so with all of this tension happening in the courtroom of heaven, suddenly I saw God the Father stand up from his throne in heaven. He walked across the room and he stared over what I like to call the balcony of heaven. And he pointed to the earth and he said, the verdict is no more delay. And immediately when I heard him say this, there were these massive double doors that blew open and all of these angels with their pent up energy rushed out of those doors and they began to flood the earth and help to answer the prayers of the saints. So just remember that vision. So at the same time, I remember telling one of my ministry friends about this vision. And my ministry friend said, well, you know about the angel in Revelation chapter 10. And I said, tell me about the angel in Revelation 10. And he said, there's an angel in Revelation chapter 10 that has a rainbow around his head and he decrees that there shall be no more delay. So my ministry friend said, I've been going all over the nations right now decreeing that we are entering into an era of no more delay. And he says, I've been seeing rainbows everywhere and I feel like it's a prophetic confirmation for what God is wanting to do in this season. So I get so excited because he says that because I had another vision that I'm about to tell you about that's connected with this decree of no more delay. So hang in there with me. So of course, after he talks about rainbows, I start seeing rainbows everywhere. I remember a few days later, I was looking out of my plane window and sometimes when you're flying, you're gonna be able to see the shadow of your plane reflected off the clouds. So I saw the shadow of our airplane reflected off the clouds and surrounding it was a complete circular double rainbow. And I felt like that was a prophetic confirmation of God wanting to release this verdict of no more delay over the church. So another reason why this is so important is because while I was having this vision of God decreeing no more delay, it was like I was going back and forth in my mind's eye between two visions. And in the second vision, I was standing in my home church and I looked up at the ceiling while I was leading worship and I saw this huge angel come into the room, its wings were spread, and it was so large that this angel covered the entirety of the ceiling. And what I heard the Lord say to me is he said, this is the angel of no more delay. So to the best of my knowledge, I didn't remember reading about an angel in Revelation that decrees there shall be no more delay. But what I'm here to tell you is I believe that God is releasing his church in this season, if they're willing to hear, if they're willing to obey, if they're willing to say yes, he is ushering his church into an era of no more delay. What does that mean? I'm believing that that means that there is no more delay concerning the health of your finances. I'm believing that that means that there's no more delay concerning your prodigals coming home, concerning situations that you've been contending um, and believing God to see released and come to a place of peace. Those situations are gonna be fixed in Jesus' name. Why? Because God is decreeing in this season over your situation, no more delay. I think about this sometimes and I think about, okay, where's the biblical theological aspect of this? How can I partner with this and make sure that it's theologically sound? So a lot of times when I look around the world and I think that you have experienced this as well, I know you have, you look and say, well, I'm believing for these things, but I see so much hurt in the world. I see so much pain in the world. How can I decree and decree and keep on proclaiming and yet I'm still not seeing the fulfillment of God's plan Come to, my, come to pass in my situation. This is what I wanna encourage you. 2000 years ago, Jesus said a statement that quickly became a theological fact. And that statement was on the cross. He said, it is finished. It is finished. The curtain was torn in two. We now have a relationship with God. We now have right standing with God. And when he did that, he also earlier taught his disciples to pray, your kingdom come, your will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. This is the reality. 2000 years ago, Jesus did the finished work. He completed it. And so now we are not fighting from a place of victimhood. We are fighting from a place of victory. We are now seated with Christ in heavenly places. And we are decreeing things that are not as though they are. And we are declaring that everything must bow its knee to the authority and power of Jesus. So let's go back to the vision. Again, Jesus said, it is finished. In this vision of the courtroom of heaven, I heard a rumbling of voices. It was the prayers of the saints. What I did not hear at any time was silence. Just think about this for a second. The conversation, what I like to call prayer is a conversation. The conversation of the saints coming up to God the Father and Jesus did not stop. I wanna challenge you today and I wanna encourage you, do not stop mid conversation with God. His outcome is that the verdict is no more delay. If you're believing for prodigals to come home, if you're believing for peace in your home, if you're believing for financial breakthrough, if you're believing that depression is gonna be lifted, that anxiety is gonna go, that you have health in your body, whatever it is, because Jesus said, It is finished. We are now invited into this reality of no more delay. And I just want to declare over you right now that by the stripes of Jesus, you are healed. Because of the blood of Jesus, you have authority and you have victory. And I just decree healing and health and wholeness in your body right now in Jesus' name. Now again, Catherine, I've prayed for five years. I've prayed for five months. I've prayed for 10 years. What I want to challenge you, and if I could just say this right in front of your face and give you a hug while I'm saying this, Do not give up. Do not stop mid-conversation. Do not give up having this conversation with the Lord because it's only a matter of time. I feel it so strongly in my spirit. It is only a matter of time where heaven and earth are going to have a collision in your life and heaven is going to win. Hear that. Heaven is going to win in your life. Somebody needs to hear that. Just lift your hands up wherever you're at in your room or your kitchen right now. We decree that heaven is going to have the final word in your life. We decree that heaven is going to win in your life. We decree that the victim mentality is being broken off of your life in Jesus name. And we just, I just decree hope in your heart. Jesus wants to give you a fresh, a fresh dose of hope right now in this season. So again, in the vision, I didn't hear the voices from the earth go silent. Let us not stop mid conversation with the Lord. And so to continue further with that, and I just want to give you a little more encouragement. The Lord reminded me specifically dealing with this dream, he reminded me of the story of Jesus's first miracle. He turned the water into wine and I love this. So you have Mary and we all know this story. So the wedding hosts run out of wine and Mary, the mother of Jesus goes up to Jesus. He's not yet performed a miracle. And Jesus, Jesus is standing there and Mary goes up to him And she says, you know, hey, we need more wine. They're out of wine. And Jesus' response is, dear woman, what do you want me to do? It's not my time. And that's the Catherine paraphrase. You know, if you say that in the South to your mama, it will quickly become your time because you don't talk to your mama that way. But he says, it's not my time. And I love it because Mary just ignores him. And she looks at the workers and she just says, do whatever he says. So we have this moment and I don't, I used to kind of wonder about this. Why is it? Was Jesus lying when he said, it's not my time? I don't think Jesus was lying. I do not believe it. it was his time. But this is the reality I believe that Mary had concerning her relationship with Jesus. And it's an eschatology term. It's called the now and the not yet, meaning as supernatural beings living in a natural world, we have one foot on the earth and we have one foot in heaven. And because of the power of the cross, we have the ability to pull the future finished work into the now. So I believe Jesus understood and Mary understood that it was not his time, but Mary was a friend of God. Mary had a relationship 
with Jesus. So she understood that she could all of the sudden pull that future timeline into the now. And so what I want you to understand here is God is wanting to partner with you to see the kingdom of heaven released in your situation, to see the kingdom of heaven released on the earth, to see circumstances around you change. And when we have a relationship with God, that miracle might be far off, but because we are a friend of God, we can do what Mary did and we can say, Jesus, I'm asking for a miracle. And that's where we have to make sure we don't stop mid conversation. I cannot stress that enough. Don't give up in the middle of your prayer life. Don't give up hoping even though it's become hard. I wanna encourage you with that. So lastly with this, the verdict is no more delay. That's the end of the story. We know how the story ends. We win because Jesus already won. He rose back to life. He came back to life. But I, I think we also need to understand this God does not always operate on our timeline. There are so many times I cannot tell you, and I know that you've experienced this as well, that we pray for something and it takes longer than we think. Sometimes it's immediate and sometimes it takes a lot longer, but the Bible tells us that a day is a thousand years and a thousand years is as a day to the Lord. So just because the Lord says the verdict is no more delay, we don't always know what that means in his timeline because he operates outside of time. And so what I wanna encourage you in this season, if you're three years into believing for a miracle, if you're four years into believing for a miracle, if you're 10 years, 15 years, however long it has been, I'm releasing over you and I'm praying in this season that it would be a quick turnaround in Jesus name. We decree a quick turnaround in Jesus name. But I also decree that if it takes longer, that you do not give up hope. Don't you dare stop believing. Don't you dare stop trusting. Don't you dare stop crying out because heaven is hearing you. And there is going to be a moment when things turn around because God is faithful. He who has called you is faithful. And so I pray, Lord, and I've seen this. I love it. After we released this vision, there were people who had been struggling to get jobs. They had immediate turnarounds. And I'm just believing that this same spirit that was released when I had the vision is going to be released into your home right now is going to be released in your situation right now. So I decree that the spirit of no more delay is coming into your home and into your situation and into your circumstances. I decree that God is more than enough. He is big enough. He is all powerful and that there have been angels released on assignment to your situation, your season, your circumstance to pull you into a now season where the verdict is no more delay. And everybody said, amen and amen. I love you guys so much and I'm cheering you on in this season. The best is yet to come.